Hear the good news and proclaim it. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We celebrate this day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you all. This is the beautiful day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Friends, I am Pastor Jeffrey Zalatoris, pastor at Harmony United Methodist Church, and I thank you for joining us in celebrating Easter this year. And I'd like to thank God for all of you and your faithfulness and your steadfast in this season. And I thank God for the wonderful people here who have helped prepare our Holy Week services, for the beautiful music that Elaine Stuckey has offered us, for David Elliott's videotaping and preparing the videos for us, and for our liturgists all week, Susie Rood, Suzanne Grimm, and Dave Pill. Beloved, it is Easter. Let us prepare our hearts for worship with music.
Thanks be to God. We begin this morning with our words from Matthew's Gospel, the good news in chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then quickly go and tell the disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the inspired word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Christ is risen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Our opening prayer, please pray with me. Almighty God, we recall that morning when you revealed your empty tomb to the women. You overturned the tables of our understanding of the world when you overcame death. You reconciled sinners and made clear the path of repentance and forgiveness and eternal life. In the coolness of that morning, your revelation was too much to comprehend. But as the light of the day and your light spread across the land, hope returned to a broken world, for Christ had risen indeed. All praise to God. Alleluia. Amen. Our New Testament lesson is Acts, from the book of Acts 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no, par no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him 
and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in, Ju in, and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Thanks be to God. lesson for Colossians 3 verses 1 through 4. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. And we celebrate this good news today, this Easter. For Jesus, who was lost to death, was seen again. He lives, thanks be to God. The lost has been found. Beloved, this Easter morning, we have relived those feelings of loss that the disciples had since that Friday. But we've also relived those feelings of the transformation of that loss into relief. Relief that God's promises are revealed in the presence of Christ with those women that, that morning. It is the feeling of relief, friends. The relief that comes when you've lost something precious and you have then found it again. But friends, there is a vast canyon between losing something temporarily, something you can afford to lose, and losing something that is precious of someone or something you dare not lose. This week, my mind has turned to stories of a book written by a chaplain. Her name is Kate Braystrup. She wrote a book called Here If You Need Me. Now, Kate is the chaplain for the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife in the state of Maine. The chaplain for the game wardens, if you will. She's the person who receives the phone calls when there are hikers stranded on mountaintops and search parties are out looking for them. She's the chaplain who gets the call when there are boating accidents and they don't know if they're survivors. She's the chaplain who gets called when missing persons are lost in the woods. She comforts the leaders of those search parties 
who have been feeling distraught when they can't find the person they seek. She's the one who thanks the volunteers who come in out of the woods, who are empty-handed and forlorn. She's the one who sits with the worried families when their loved ones are still lost and missing. She's the one who prays, and her presence is prayer. One time, Kate was called out to Masquenongi Pond in Maine. A little girl was lost. She was missing in the woods. Her parents had searched for her unsuccessfully until they were exhausted. They called 911. A search teams assembled, combing through the woods. By late afternoon, there was still no sign of this girl. By the time the chaplain had arrived, it was dusk, and the search parties were leaving the woods, going home for the night. They could not work in the dark. The Salvation Army food truck that had been set up to serve all of the volunteers, it was still there, the lights were on, the smell of coffee still fresh, the smell of beef stew in the air. But the game wardens, the emergency personnel, the volunteers were walking to their cars. The little girl's mother and father were sitting at a picnic table nearby, still stunned, still shocked. They were lost in their fears. They were lost in their memories. How their little girl wearing that Elmo sweatshirt and jeans had just walked away from their campsite just walked away, neither of them seeing where she had gone. It was fully dark, fully night in a thick forest, 10 o'clock past. The chaplain continued sitting with the girl's parents. They'd been replaying their worst fears for hours. What was the hope? Through this night, because the search parties had been called off for the day, if dozens of search members couldn't find the girl in the light of day, who would find her at night? Still, the chaplain attempted to sustain a glimmer of hope for those girls' parents, explaining to them, little kids who get lost in the woods do something really smart. When they realize they're lost, they find a snug place and they lie down there and they sleep. Adults tend to keep moving. They keep thinking they'll find their way out and they get more and more lost. But little kids, they'll conk out and they wait for grown-ups to solve it. The disciples did not have comforting chaplains that Friday night when Jesus was laid in the tomb. There were no chaplains to help the the disciples that Saturday, all those who had followed Jesus were lost. They were sheep scattered without a shepherd in a town of hungry wolves. And their master and friend Jesus had been arrested and tried and convicted, rejected and then nailed to a cross to die. The suddenness and the circumstances of Jesus' death shocked them all. It was too much for them. This even though Jesus for weeks had been telling the disciples to prepare for his departure. Even at that last supper, Jesus had told them, a little while you will no longer see me, and again in a little while you will see me. But his words only seemed to confuse the disciples, and Jesus had to explain even further, I tell you, I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice. Even so, the disciples were not prepared. Can you imagine the disciples' fear since that Friday morning? Their teacher, the one who spoke of love, who taught to love one's God and neighbor, the one who healed the sick and the one who cared for the broken, he had been treated as a criminal as a criminal, like he were some traitor of the state or a violent rebel. And if the Prince of Peace could be treated as some killer, how would the rest of the disciples be treated? And on that night of the Last Supper, Jesus knew the disciples were feeling sorrow. 
He recognized their pain, telling them, Because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Can you imagine their sorrow? Their friend who knew not sin and gave himself up over and over to convict men and women to turn away from their sins and accept God's forgiveness. That man who gave hope to the hopeless had died. He was lost to them and not like the temporary loss of someone who just left town for a while. This was not the lost that would one day be found. In their hearts, in the hearts of the disciples, fear and sorrow had settled in, had become encrusted in them. Their loss of Jesus felt permanent. The feeling of permanent loss had grown deeper for that girl's parents after midnight and one o'clock in the morning passed. At Masquenangi Pond, Kate stayed with the parents of that that little girl in the dark at night. None of them could sleep. Fear and sorrow and confusion had gripped them for hours. But there were a few game wardens still in the woods with little flickers of flashlights and their canine rescue and search dogs with them. And around three o'clock in that morning, one of the wardens and his canine named Grace Grace found a little girl wearing an Elmo sweatshirt curled up under a bush. The warden let the dog's cold nose waken the girl, and he said gently, Hi, honey. Do you want to go home now? She said yes. She crawled out of her nesting place and got to her feet. The warden asked her, Would you like me to carry you? No, thank you, she said politely. Want me to hold your hand, the warden asked. They came out of the woods, walking hand in hand past that Salvation Army food truck, Grace trotting along proudly behind. That Sunday morning, two women walked to the tomb. Jesus was lost to them. On Friday, he was lost to them as they prepared his body, as they interred it into the cave, the tomb, just before sundown. And their precious Jesus was permanently lost to them. So the women walked to that tomb early Sunday morning to mourn because they could not mourn their loss in public for the custom of public mourning was not allowed for the man who died on a cross as a criminal. They could not comfort each other in public. They could not gather together. For two whole days, these women were alone in their grief. That morning, that Sunday morning, they walked together so they might grieve together and mourn together. They saw the guards were still on duty standing beside the stone, the stone where the cave was where they had lain Jesus' body. The women kept their distance from the guards, crying and comforting each other at their loss. When Matthew tells us, suddenly there was a shaking of the earth. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. And then he invited the women, Come, see the place where he lay. Can you imagine their confusion? The tomb had been guarded all of that time since they laid him in the tomb. The heavy stone covering the entrance to the tomb had not been moved since it was rolled in front in the first place. Yet as the woman stood by, the guards were stunned as if turned to stone. 
And God's messenger had effortlessly rolled aside the stone covering the tomb. The women, expecting to see a body there, saw an empty floor. There was no body in that tomb. And the women could only do as they were told. Go. Proclaim and tell the disciples. And Matthew tells us they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. And then Jesus solidified their very hope. He revealed himself to the women as they walked, and he said the simplest and yet most astonishing thing to them that morning, greetings. For those women, how could that be? How could it be? What was permanently lost has now been found and returned to them. And he instructed them likewise, do not be afraid, but go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. The lost indeed had been found. The women who had been lost to their own grief and fear, they were found. And for these women, the Jesus who had been permanently lost to them, incomprehensibly to them even, he'd been found. Imagine being those, those parents at Maskonongi Parand. Imagine their relief at three in the morning when the warden and their daughter came out together. From the woods, she's alive. Thank God she's alive. Imagine those two women named Mary. That morning, fearful, joyful, and confused when Jesus met them on the road and he said that simple word, greetings. He's alive. Thank God he's alive. Beloved, this Easter, remember what it means to be found, for God has found you. And remember what it means when the lost has been returned. And celebrate the miracle, the miracle of the permanent loss being transformed into God's eternal gain. Friends, that is our good news and our celebration. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Amen.
Friends, as you're viewing this on Facebook and online, I invite you, if you are comfortable, to type in any prayer requests you have. If you'd like others to pray along with you during this week and you feel comfortable sharing a joy or a concern during the time that we offer our prayers of intercession, just share those and those who are reading can join in the prayers. Join us then in our prayers of intercession today. For your healing mercies, O God, to mend and repair bodies and minds, for healing families and communities, and for your protection of all who have answered the call to vocations of healing and caregiving, we pray, Lord, have mercy. For a worldwide renewal of faith in Christ and the awakening of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in all Christians that reveal the kingdom of God, we pray, Christ, have mercy. For the poor, the homeless, and all who are vulnerable, especially in this season of uncertainty, we pray, Lord, have mercy. And now the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we bear our griefs and sins before you. We lay our inequities at the foot of the cross. All we have done to grieve you and all we have failed to do that separated us from you. Forgive us, we pray. Save us, we pray. Free us from the chains of sin that we may freely and fully serve you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved, the good news is this. The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, died, overcame death, and was raised from the grave to take away the sins of the world. Let us rejoice. Let us also join together our voices, saying the Nicene Creed is our affirmation of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human for our sake. Who he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, in this season of uncertainty, when we cannot gather together here, we continue, though, to share an outpouring of our thanks for all that God has offered us and for God's grace in our lives. We invite you, as a congregation and others sharing in this time of worship, to offer your gifts here for the church. We are able to receive those gifts on our online website through an online giving source. We can also receive checks in the mail as well. These are our opportunities to offer our thanks to God and our opportunities to continue to strengthen the ministries of this congregation of Harmony United Methodist Church. And for this, our offering, let us pray. Holy God, we offer you our thanks this day, for you have been generous to us. 
You guided us through paths of righteousness that our eyes could not see. You brought us through the darkness of grief and valleys of fear with your comfort and grace. You hold the keys to the gates of death, and through Jesus, the Paschal Lamb, you made the ultimate offering for our salvation. We, your grateful people, give you our offering that you may bless it as you bless our lives. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Proclaim with the confidence of the body of Christ redeemed by his grace the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us go then into the world as Easter people. People who understand and have felt the grace of God and the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ. For indeed, Christ our Lord has risen. Friends, be relieved. Happy and blessed Easter to all of you. May God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit bless you, forgive your sins, and secure your hope in eternal life. Amen.